everyone welcome to bajos exam prep my name is navin and uh, welcome to this series of cmat so today we will be looking at uh, data interpretation it's going to be at least a three part series where we will be discussing the most common questions that we expect in cmat di okay yeah hi shreya hello everyone so let's quickly begin so this is the first set uh, so it looks like it looks like a bar graph right so the graph given below shows the number of resolutions passed by five countries only members in the una across years so we have got these five countries as spain india usa germany and france so the number of resolutions passed by france spain is 60 by india is 80 usa is 70 germany is 40 france is 90 right we have got different values number of resolutions passed by these five countries so there is nothing more to actually infer from here we will straight away move over to the questions so the first question is the number of resolutions passed by india is what percentage of the total number of resolutions passed by five countries in the una across years so that means we need to add all these uh, five values which is 60 80 uh, then we have 70 then we have 40 then we have 90 now 80 plus 70 results in a 150 60 and 40 will result in a 100 so that is 150 plus 100 250 250 plus 90 is 340 so 340 is the total number of resolutions passed by the five countries out of which india's share is going to be how much so if you calculate this 80 upon 340 in other words this is going to be 4 upon 17 right if you simplify it's 4 upon 17 now 4 upon 16 would have been 1 by 4 which is 25 percent so 4 upon 17 should be a value which should be less than 25 percent right because the denominator is larger as compared to 6, 16 right so less than 25 percent it can't be a value close to 20 percent can't be less than 20 can't be this low so the answer is going to be c 23.5 percent right an approximation will be good enough we don't have to precisely calculate 4 upon 17. okay the next one the number of resolutions passed by france is how much more than the number of resolutions passed by spain and looking at the options it's about percentage so france resolution is 90 and the spain is 60 so how much percentage more is that so this is 30 out of 60 this is the fraction wise or the percentage wise more right so how much is this going to be this is 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 is considered to be 50 percent so b becomes our answer okay next is what is the ratio of the sum of the number of resolutions passed by spain and usa so spain is 60 usa is 70 so this is 130 to the sum of the number of resolutions passed by the remaining countries in the una across years so if you remember from the first question total was 340 out of 340 if we have 130 here so the left one is going to be 210 by the remaining countries right we don't have to again calculate uh, the sum of the remaining three so this ratio is going to be 13 is to 21 which obviously is none of the given options so e nota nota stands for none of the above okay so none of these options is the correct one so the answer is going to be option e nota next if the ratio of the number of resolutions passed by the men and women of france is in the ratio 2 is to 3 so if you're talking about france if it is in the ratio 2 is to 3 by number of men and women then what is the number of resolutions passed by the men of France? So can we say men of France will be 2 out of 5 of the total, which is nothing but 90. So this is going to result in 5 into 18 is 90, 18 into 2 is going to be 36. So the option that says 36 is option A. Very simple, basic questions based on sum, ratios, percentages. Yeah, yeah. All ko zada to hai right Nishu the answer was option C there okay next one if the ratio of the number of resolutions passed by men and women of Spain is in the ratio 2 is to 1 so we are talking about this 60 being in the ratio 2 is to 1 where 2 stands for men and well 1 stands for women 
what is the difference between the number of resolutions passed by the men and women of Spain? So men is going to be two third of 60. Women is going to be one third of 60. So that results in the difference being one third of 60 and one third of 60 is nothing but 20. So the option that says 20 is option D. D ho jayega answer. Bahut hi basic, bahut hi simple concept of arithmetic applied here in bar graph in DI. So in CMAT you expect only such basic question. There is nothing, um, you know, more than moderate level that you sh should ever expect. Okay, the next one for this, so that you guys can see, I'm going to hide myself. So it says the study the information given below carefully and answer the questions that follow. Three buses going to Goa have seats in three different positions, namely aisle, middle and window. A few of them are occupied and a few of them are vacant. The total number of seats in each position is 40. Bus P, that is one of the buses. The number of vacant aisle seats is 20% of the total number of seats. Only 50% of the middle seats are occupied. The number of vacant window seats is two-thirds of the total occupied seats in the aisle and middle positions. Bus Q. The number of vacant seats in the middle position is 10 more than the number of occupied aisle seats in bus P. The number of occupied window seats is half of the total and so on and so forth. So for this, let's uh, talk about each of the buses. Let's talk about bus P. There are three types of uh, windows. Uh, there, sorry, there are three types of seats, right? So there are aisle seats, middle and window. So let's say this is window, this is middle and this is aisle, right? And the total number of seats in each position is going to be 40. So 40, 40 and 40. Right? This is total for each type. And we are talking about the bus P here. Okay. The number of vacant aisle seats. So let's talk about how many seats are occupied and how many are vacant. Okay. It's 20% of total number of seats. Total number of seats kitna hamare paas? 120. 120 ka 20%. That is 24 seats are vacant. That means the remaining 16 are occupied along the aisle. Next statement says only 50% of the middle seats are occupied. Yani ki 20 occupied and 20 are vacant. The number of vacant window seats is two thirds of the total occupied seats in the aisle and middle position. So aisle and middle total seats is 80. Right? Usme se occupied seats kitne? Occupied seats are 20 plus 16, 36. So total occupied seats in the uh, aisle and middle position is 36. So 36 ka two third. So two third of 36 is going to be 24, right? So the number of vacant window seats, vacant window seats is 24 out of 40. So remaining 16 are occupied. So we have figured out for bus P, kitne uh, window seats <laughs> Occupied, kitne vacant, same for middle and aisle. Now, let's go to the bus queue. Window, middle, aisle. Total we know is going to be 40 each. And the number of occupied and vacant seats for each type. So, let's go to bus queue. The number of vacant seats in the middle position is 10 more than the number of occupied aisle seats in bus P. So, Occupied aisle seats in bus P. Occupied aisle seats in bus P is 16. So number of, uh, so 10 more than 16 is 26, right? So you 26 ho gaya. So what is 26? The number of vacant seats in the middle position. So this is 26. Next statement says the number of occupied window seats is half of the total vacant seats in bus P. So total vacant seats Kitne hai hamare paas, right? So this is 20, 20, 20, that is 60, 68. So 68 total vacant seats hai bus P mein. Uska half, which is going to be 34, right? Half of total is going to be 34. 34 seats of window are occupied. So window ko occupied jo hai, wo aapka 34 hai. Next, that means uh, 14 are uh, uh, occupied in the middle and remaining 6 are vacant in window side. 
the number of occupied aisle seats is 12 more than the number of vacant aisle so ye 12 zyada hai so 40 ka half 20 20 usme se 12 ka gap chahiye to 6 kam zyada kar dete hain so one is going to be 26 another is going to be uh, 14 such that their sum is 40 and one is 12 more than the other right so the number of occupied aisle seats is more than the number of vacant aisle seats. So 26 and 14 becomes the balance for this. Let's move to the next one, bus R. So bus R ki baat karenge. So we will have occupied and vacant and we will have total as uh, 40 each. Window, middle, aisle. Total number of vacant seats is 37.5% of total number of seats. Now, 37.5% guys is 3 by 8 in fraction. And total number of seats kitne hamare paas? 120. So, 3 eighths of 120, this is going to be 15, right? 8 into 15 is 120, 3 into 15 is 45. So, total number of vacant seats is 45. Kiska, window, middle ya aisle, nothing is mentioned. That means we are talking about all three together. The middle seats are 50% vacant. So middle seats 50% vacant hai, so 20 vacant and 20 occupied. The number of occupied aisle seats is two sort of total occupied seats. So think about this. Out of 120, if 45 are vacant, that means the remaining 75 are occupied. Is total occupied 75 ka two third is going to be 50 right so the number of occupied aisle seats is two third of the total occupied seats so two third of total occupied is going to be 75 so looks like we can't have negative scenario right so, the total number of vacant seats is 3 8 of total number of seats. Three eighths of total number of seats. Total number of seats are 120, right? Or her position may 40. Hai. The middle seats are 50% vacant and the number of occupied is two-third. We can't have 40 also because it will not make sense. Is 75 plus 45 120? Okay, let's move over to the question and see ki where is the issue. Let's look at the questions. What is the total number of occupied seats in all the three buses together? If the option is going to match, we'll go ahead with it. Total occupied seats. So in the first one, the total occupied six seats is uh, 20 plus 16 plus 16, 32 plus 20, 52. The next one is 34 plus 14 plus 26. 34 plus 26 is 60, 60 plus 14 is 74. So we have 52, we have 74 as the occupied and uh, here we have 75 so this is going to be more than 150 right 74 plus 75 plus 2 it should end in 1 is it 201 ah uh, this is going to be 201 so looks like ye wala kuch garbad hai it should not be two third it should be something else so we will see what is the issue in this fraction later on okay because if we are able to fill this part, we will be able to fill all the remaining because we know the sum horizontally and as well as vertically. Okay. Next one is if one ticket to Goa cost rupees 1500 for each of the buses, find the revenue generated by bus Q from this Goa trip. So if you are talking about bus Q, so the occupied kitna hai hamare paas 74, right? So the answer is going to be 74 into 1500. So, 74 into 15 will be 740 plus 370, which is going to be 1110. 
So B O is the answer, right? We will have triple one zero followed by two more zeros from fifteen hundred. So one lakh eleven thousand is the revenue generated. Okay, next for each vacant seat, if the company loses rupees eight hundred, then find the total loss suffered by the company. Total loss means total vacant seat. So remember, total seats are. 120 from each bus 120 120 120 is 360 out of 360 if we have 201 occupied that means remaining 159 are vacant yeah so up total measures kallo calculate or you can start adding the number of vacant seats from here this is 68 this is uh, 46 and this is 45 68 plus 46 plus 45 if you add will give you 159 so if there are total 159 uh, vacant seats and the pricing is 800 per seat, so is total loss kitna ho So 159 into 800, 8 into 9 is 72. So it will end in 2, right? Last three digits, 200 hone chahiye. I am not going to calculate everything. So B only makes sense. Ki this is going to be the total loss. Okay, next. If bus R, if 40% of the seats were occupied by females, 40% of the seats were occupied by females. So total occupied seats we have is 75, right? Is 75 ka 40%, which is going to be 30. If 30 seats are occupied by females, that means the remaining 45 are occupied by males. And out of these 30, if 40% were at least, 40% of 30 means 12, they are at least 25 years old. That means the remaining 18, they are less than 25 years old. Then find the number of females below the age of 25 in bus R. So this is going to be 18. Right? Tenth, the number of vacant window seats in bus P. The number of vacant window seats in bus P. So in bus P, number of vacant window seats is 24. Right? Yeah, 24 either. Is how much percentage more than that of the vacant window seats in bus R? Vacant window seats in bus R. So now this is a part where we need to solve. Yani ki ab mere ko ye two third ke saath kuch karna padega. So it's going to be either two third or it's going to be one third. Right? Two third mein to negative wa raha hai. Because we are getting 50 seats out of 40 seats are occupied which is impossible. So we need to look at the options. Or percentage to 100 se kam hai. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this two third as one third. So when I change that two-third to one-third, instead of 50 now, we will have only 25 seats occupied in the aisle. So 25 are occupied, 20 are here. So 25 plus 20 is 45. So this is going to be 30. This is going to be 10. This is 25. This is going to be 15. So horizontally and vertically, everything matches. So now we have total 10 window vacant seats. We have 10 window vacant seats, 10 window vacant seats. So this is going to be more than 100%, isn't it? Okay. The number of vacant window seats in bus P. Vacant window seats in bus P is 24. Vacant window seats in bus R is only 10. This doesn't make sense. So, looks like this is not even one third. What else could this be? If not taken as one third. The other possibility, which is typo, sakta hai, maybe this is two fifth. So if I take this as two fifth, 
So this is going to give us 5 into 15 is 75. 15 into 2 is 30. So this gives me 30 here. So if this is going to be 30, this is going to be 10. This is 30. This is going to be 15. Uh, now this makes sense. Because if we take 15, so now we can percentage. Ban sakta. So we have to calculate 24 upon, as in one number 15, one number 24. How much percentage is there? So this is 9 over 15 more. So 9 by 15 percentage. This will reduce to 5, this being 3. So this is 3 by 5, which is 60%. Okay, so we, we were able to rectify the typo. So it's not 2 third, it's actually 2 fifth of the total occupied seat. Right? So if we work a little smart, we can actually figure out the mistake in the question itself. And this is completely okay. In exam, also please expect that there may be chances that there are going to be typos. So typos wale question chhod dene chahiye. Theek hai? Nobody is awarded marks, so don't waste your time there. Okay. The next one, again, I'll have to keep myself invisible because then you won't be able to see the graphs. So the set says, study the following information carefully and answer the given question. The bar graph given below shows the quantity of fruits in tons exported by a company in five different months, which is January to May. And the bar graph given below, so this is this graph. It says, shows the value in lakh rupees of the fruits exported by the company in the five different given months. So the first one is about the number of tons. And the next one is in about uh, lakhs of rupees. Okay. So, first question. What is the difference in tons between the quantity of fruits exported by the company in February and April together and that in March? So, in dono ko hum log add karenge or fit subtract karenge. Well, if you are going to add these two numbers and subtract, since these two values are equal, they will cancel out. We'll be left with only this excess. February ka hi data extra hoga, which is 10, of course. So we will have 10 as the answer. So 10 tons is the difference in the quantity of fruits exported by the company in February and April together and that in March. Right? Next question is in which month was the value of the fruit per ton the minimum? Now, what is value of the fruit per ton? Value here would mean rupees per ton minimum kis month mein hai. Since all the five options are mentioned, let's talk about January first. So, can we say in January, the total money that they earned was 40 and the total tons spent was 8. We don't have to bring in lakhs and tons ko kgs mein, wo sab nahi karna hai. 40 by 8 is going to be 5. If you look at February now, February the total money they earned was 25 while the tons they exported was 10. So this is going to be 2.5. So, so far we can say January to nahi ho ra answer kyunki usse chota number 2.5 bhi apne paas. Okay, let's calculate for March now. In March the total money earned was 50 and the total tons exported was 12. Now 50 by 12, bas aapko check karna hai, 2.5 se zyada hai ki kam hai. Don't have to exactly solve. Now 12 into 4 is 48. So ye definitely 2.5 se to zyada hai. That means March also cannot be the answer. Let's look at April. April mein this is 30 lakh or 30 lakh rupees. And the tons is still 12. So 30 by 12, how much is this going to be? If you solve this, this is going to be 2.5 again. Now we can't mark two options. So February bhi nahi ho sakta or April bhi nahi ho sakta. May hi ho answer. Should we check this? Let's check. In the case of May, the total money was uh, 35 as in the total value. And the total tons was a little over 8. A little over 8. Achha, ye to usse bhi zyada ho ja hai. This is approximately 4. Okay. So. It 
is it that the uh, bar graphs are interchanged okay let me see maine wo galat wala to nahi le liya ha see mere ko laga hi so actually what is happening here is this is the graph for tons and this is the graph for money so the right hand side bar graph is uh, quantity and the left hand side graph is value so iska bhi answer change ho jayega so since we have to talk about the quantity so we are going to deal with this february and april together and that in march so february is 25 april is 30 so which is 55 and this is going to be 50 so 55 minus 50 ye 5 dega so the answer is going to be b if we use this logic then when are we going to have uh the highest value so abhi humne kya calculate kar liya tha we calculated uh tons divided by rupees right if you do the reciprocal rupees divided by ton so can i say jo sabse bada value tha वो अब सबसे छोटा हो जाएगा बिकॉज वी आर गोइंग टू डू द रेसी प्रोग्रेस सो आई डोंट हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस स्क्रैच वी आर प्रेटी श्योर दैट दिस वाज द लार्जेस्ट वैल्यू क्योंकि 50 बाय 12 वाज लेस देन 5 रिमेंबर 4.8 समथिंग था सो द लार्जेस्ट इज 5 सो इट्स रेसी प्रोकल इज गोइंग टू बी द स्मॉलेस्ट तो ये आपका जनवरी हो जाएगा सो द मिस्टेक वाज इन अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हिच ग्राफ इज व्हिच in the in the graph they have not mentioned which one is tons and which one is value right okay so i have now we know that this is about the quantity and this is about the value to ab hum log usko sahi tarike se solve kar sakte hain bina galti ke what is the difference between the value of the fruits per ton exported by the company in february and may difference nikalna hai so february is here and may is here if you look at the difference so this is where may stops so can we say we have 1 2 3 4 4 small units now 8 se 10 ke beech mein do ka gap hota hai so the gap of 2 is divided into 5 equal parts out of those 5 equal parts we need only 4 out of it or you can understand this is this as panch equal parts mein se keval 4 equal parts chahiye and those many parts is a part is it's a total it's a fraction from total of 2 right so can we say these uh, are acha question mein per ton bhi bol rahe hain so we need to actually solve divided by ton also hmm it's not just the value to solve to karna hi padega waise bhi let's talk about february In February, the quantity is twenty-five, and the value is ten. So February के लिए can we say it's ten by twenty-five rupees per ton? जो भी होगा. Let's talk about May. So for May, we have the quantity as thirty-five, and value. Value is going to be एट से ज्यादा ठीक है सो हाउ मच इज दैट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी फाइव इक्वल पार्ट तो हर चीज पॉइंट फोर पॉइंट फोर है सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी एट पॉइंट फोर सो एट पॉइंट फोर बाई थर्टी फाइव नाउ एट पॉइंट फोर बाई थर्टी फाइव इफ यू सिंप्लीफाई दिस दिस इज बोथ दे बोथ आर इन द टेबल ऑफ सेवन राइट सो दिस इज वन पॉइंट टू बाई फाइव If we solve this, this is going to be two by five. So the difference between these two fractions will result in point eight by five. Now point eight by five is going to be one point six. One point six, yani ke one six and zeros is only option D, right? Feb and April is coming same. हा सो आई रेक्टिफाइड दैट राइट अश्मिता 
the problem was I took the graphs uh, in the reverse order. So that was the mistake that I did. Because there were both below and below. Below were both showing. Okay. Next is the value of the fruits per ton. Again, we have to calculate fruits per ton exported by the company in March. So what is the value of this fruits per ton in March? So March made the total tons is 50 and the total value is 12. So the calculation is going to be 12 upon 50, which is going to give us um, 0.24. Right? 24 by 100 a year, which is 0.24. And uh, same thing we need to calculate for the February month. So February ka abhi abhi calculate kara tha humne, which is 2 by 5, which is 0.4. So we need to calculate the percentage. So 24 upon 40 is what percentage? 4 se divide kar denge, to ye 6 by 10 ho jayega. 6 by 10 is nothing but 60%. Right? So the value of the fruits per ton exported by the company in March, that is 0.24, is 60% of the value of the fruits exported by the company in February. So 60% yani B option. Right? Okay. The next one. What was the percentage drop in the export quantity of fruits from March to April? Okay. Remember, your quantity here? So, I have drop. Dekhna hai. So, this was 50, it dropped to 30. So, can we say there is a drop of 20 over 50 and 20 over 50 is nothing but 40% ka drop? So, the answer is going to be 40%. So, in the second set, one typo. In the third set, uh, since the graphs were not properly numbered, labeled, so we had some difficulty understanding which graph is which. So, we lost a couple of minutes over there. So as you guys can see, these sets are very, very uh, simple, very straightforward, very less calculation, but you need to be very quick with these, right? Okay. So please meet our CAT 2022 toppers, Vinayak, Sarojit, Smart, Vidhi and Pugal. And there are many, many more who have scored more than 99 percentile. These all are our classroom students. So if you guys are willing to join our batch, wherein we provide you with tons and tons of things. The first thing being the tablet, which consists of hundreds of engaging videos, live classroom sessions where we discuss the concepts and problems. We take up the doubts. Then you will be provided with some more than 75 mocks of CAT and other MB entrances. More than 10,000 practice questions as topic tests, sectional tests the books that are provided to you four hard copy books will be given to you all the doubts will be handled you will be provided uh, more than 300 engaging videos you will also be given uh, proper assistance you know 100 percent assistance when it comes to gdpi and vat preparation cat is just the first level right second level is getting into it the second stage so if you want to join one of our batches which is going to start very soon so you can join our uh, program and you can avail up to 90% scholarship. The exam day of the scholarship is 15th of April at 7 p.m. So please everyone do not forget to write this scholarship test. So depending upon the scholarship, your fees will be waived off. So far we have waived off and we have given scholarships over 1 crore rupees to our more than 27,000 students. Okay. On 22nd of April at 7 p.m., Mr. Vikrant is going to discuss how to ace VARC for CAT 2023. He's also going to help you how to devise your test taking strategy, how to attempt your VARC section, which should be, uh, which all topics and which types of questions should be given importance. When should you leave an RC? When should you select it? What are the different themes of an RC? Everything is going to discuss. So we have limited seats. Everyone, please make sure that you register for this. Okay, registration link is given in the description and in the chat and everyone who are online right now, don't forget to give a like. If you guys have been registered, make sure that you register. And starting from 12th of April, okay, so recently we have started 100 most expected CMAT questions. So for example, this was one of those sessions. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel, press on the bell icon 
so that every time a, a, a session is about to start or it gets uploaded, you're notified so that you don't miss on anything. You can also our, download our app for free and uh, attempt our daily section wise quiz. Okay, you can brush up your basics by attempting quizzes every day and get better and better in every section. So all you have to do is download the app and start um, uh, attempting these quizzes. Okay, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to do anything. App uh, download karo or shuru karo. The app is available on Google Play and it is given in the description below. And uh, from 6th of April, we have started 500 most expected CAT questions for 2023, this year's CAT. So, 500 questions we will do. That will cover all the topics and all the types of questions that you can expect in this year's CAT. So, make sure you subscribe for this. This is also available on YouTube. It will be live every day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. You can also like our Facebook page. You can join our Telegram channel, which is Badger's Exam Prep for MBA. And please make sure that you download our app. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Please make sure that you attend the next session of CMAT, which is going to happen tomorrow again. Until then, see you. Bye bye. Dhirendra set theory class will happen very soon. So please download the app and in the app also you can see that there are a lot of sessions happening right now in that we are doing set theory. There are some sessions that have already happened. Jo ho chuke hai, wo bhi aap dekh sakte ho. Hai? So that way you will be able to cover a lot of set theory beforehand. Chalo. Take care. Bye-bye.